So Meta just released the Segment Anything 2 model or SAM2, a neural network that can segment not just images but entire videos as well. SAM2 is an interactive, promptable segmentation model, meaning you can interactively click or drag bounding boxes on one or more objects you find in the scene and SAM2 will be able to predict a mask singling out the object and track it across the input clip. In this video, we are going to dive deep into the SAM2 paper and discuss the brilliant architectural choices that allows it to combine images and prompts and the temporal information from videos together to generate these amazingly accurate segmentation masks. We will also cover their novel data engine pipeline and the story of how they created one of the largest video segmentation datasets while training these models. So make sure you stick right till the end to catch all of that. Also note that SAM2 directly builds up on the concepts introduced last year in the original SAM paper. So there might be certain points in this video where I might uh, refer to the original paper. And so if you haven't watched my previous video on SAM1, I'd highly encourage you to go check that out. If there's some concepts here that you weren't able to fully understand. I've even worn the same dress that I wore last time. So it should be an easy and smooth viewing transition. Welcome to Neural Breakdown. Let's get started by zooming out and analyze the entire pipeline from a bird's eye view. So SAM2 focuses on the PVS or Promptable Visual Segmentation Task. Given an input video and an user prompt like point clicks, boxes, or dense masks, the network must predict a masklet, which is another term for a spatio-temporal mask. It's spatio because the network must learn the space that the queried object covers at each individual frame. And it's temporal because this mask changes as time progresses in the video. Once a masklet is predicted, it can be iteratively refined by providing more prompts in additional frames through positive or negative clicks. To interactively update the segmented mask. A huge challenge for processing videos actually comes from the temporal or sequential nature of the video. Objects change as the scene unfolds and they may deform, shift, get darker, brighter and even be occluded by other objects as time goes on. However, SAM2 consumes individual frames per video one by one and maintain a memory bank that store information about previously generated output masks. We will dive deep into the details of these components in a minute, but for now, just keep in mind that this memory bank is responsible for modeling the dynamic nature of the input video, and the rest of the pipeline are kind of the same as the original SAM1 model. Now let's see how SAM2 generates segmentation masks for videos. Let's say the user inputs a video into the model and also some point clicks at one of the frames. First, the video is divided into multiple frames and each of the frames are independently encoded using a vision transformer based masked autoencoder computer vision model. Just imagine it as a black box that inputs a single frame as an image and outputs a multi-channel feature map of shape 256 by 64 by 64 meaning there are 256 feature maps each of size 64 by 64 and they all capture different spatial properties of the input frame. All the frames of the video are similarly processed using this encoder. Notice that these embeddings do not consider the video sequence, they are just independent frame embeddings meaning they don't have access to other frames in the video. Secondly, they do not consider the input prompt at all, meaning that the image encoder just runs once for each frame when the video is originally inputted and the results are cached and reused for all types of input prompts down the line. This design decision makes SAM2 run at interactive speeds because the heavy lifting of encoding images only needs to happen once per video input. But of course, to train a promptable segmentation model, we do need to eventually incorporate the input prompts somewhere within the pipeline and that is exactly what the prompt encoder does. Just like the original SAM model, input prompts can come from point clicks, positive or negative, boxes and segmentation masks. The prompt encoder's job is to then encode these prompts by converting them into a representative vector embedding. 
The prompt encoder converts all the prompts from a single frame into a shape of n tokens by 256. The way this encoding is done is the same as the original SAM paper, so I'll request you to go check out that first video if you want an explanation of that. These encodings are only derived from the input prompt. They are completely unconditional on the input video itself. So you got independent image embeddings coming from the image encoder and independent prompt embeddings coming from the prompt encoder. Both of them are unaware about each other till this point. So now we need to marry them together to generate binary mask predictions. And that is exactly what the mask decoder does. Let's revisit how the original SAM model did the mask decoding stuff before we discuss how SAM v2 is different. But before that, please go hit the like button right now. Drop a comment and subscribe to the channel because that supports the channel in a huge way and helps us to keep growing. If you want access to the write-ups, slides and animations from this video and all the other videos in the channel, including coding projects and bonus walkthroughs, do visit our Patreon page because I do upload all of that for our patrons and YouTube members. If you're already a member, thanks a lot for supporting the channel. Um, I can't believe our members are growing so healthily in such a short time, so thanks a lot for believing in us. Let's get back to the video. The original SAM model attaches three special output token embeddings to the input prompt sequence. The role of these output tokens will be clear in just a minute. First, a self-attention layer is applied to the prompt embeddings, which basically enriches each prompt embedding to be more contextually aware about all the other prompt embeddings in the list. Second, these self-aware prompt encodings are updated by doing cross-attention with the image embeddings. And finally, the image embedding is updated with the cross-attention with the latest prompt embeddings. These last two steps basically marries the unconditional image embeddings and unconditional prompt embeddings together to form new conditional images and prompt embeddings. After all of the attention stuff is done, we now have prompts and images that are contextualized with each other. And we will extract the embeddings of the three output tokens we had placed during inputting the prompts. You can consider these embeddings to capture the high-level semantic context of the queried object. These three output token embeddings are reshaped into three two-dimensional feature maps, then pass through some MLPs to predict three segmentation masks. You can imagine these segmentation masks to capture the whole, the part or the subpart of the queried object. For example, say you got an image of this scissor and you have a prompt click that looks like that. Then one mask may identify the entire scissor, one may identify the two handles, and the third one may identify just the right handle. Again, the original SAM video has all of these details, so once again, do watch that one if you want a more detailed breakdown of the original architecture. So, if you're all caught up, that was SAM 1's decoder, which would only segment static images. What does SAM V2 do to segment entire videos? Well, it introduces the concept of a memory bank to track information about already processed frames of the video. So after the mask decoder generates output masks by combining the prompt and image encodings, the output mask is passed through a memory encoder to obtain a memory embedding. Basically the output masks are downsampled using convolutional layers and the unconditional image encoding is again added to this output then pass through some lightweight convolutional layers to fuse all of the information together. And the resulting spatial feature map is called the memory. You can imagine the memory to be a representation of the original input frame and the generated masks from a given time frame in the video. These memories are generated as the frames within the video are processed one by one. The most recent n memories are stored in a queue called the memory bank. The memory bank additionally stores the last m prompts inputted by the user to keep track of multiple previous input prompts. Finally, in addition to these spatial memory queues, the mask decoder output tokens for each frame are also stored, which are like object pointers that capture high-level semantic information about the object to segment. So to recap, the memory bank contains the last n segmentation outputs, the last m 
user input prompts and those output token embeddings as object identifiers. And now that we have a way to save past information from a video into a memory bank, all we need to do is make our mask decoder output masks that are contextualized with the information stored in this bank. And this is achieved using memory attention. The role of the memory attention is to condition the current frame features on the past frame features and predictions coming from the memory bank. Before inputting the image encodings into the mask decoder, we introduce the memory attention block between the frame encoder and the mask decoder. The memory attention block first performs self-attention with respect to the embeddings from the current frame and then performs cross-attention between the image embeddings and the contents of the memory bank. This means that the original unconditional image embeddings now get contextualized with the previous output masks, previous input prompts, and the object pointers stored inside the memory bank. During the self-attention and cross-attention layers, in addition to the usual sinusoidal position embeddings, 2D rotary positional encodings are also used. Without getting into extra details, rotary positional embeddings allow us to capture relative relationships between corresponding frames. And if these rotary positional embeddings are 2D, they work well for images because they also help to model the spatial relationship between the frame encodings both horizontally and vertically. Intuitively, this allows the mask decoder to look back into previous prompts and predicted masks to pick out relevant information using attention and basically use that to generate the mask of the latest frame. At this stage too, SAM2 also uses KIP connections that directly connect the embeddings from the image encoder to the output of the memory attention block so that the high resolution image information can directly flow through during mask decoding. The final big architectural change that SAM2 does is that along with the binary masks and the IOU scores, the decoder also predicts an additional head called the occlusion score. Basically, during the video, the queried object can get occluded because it got blocked by another object in the scene. The occlusion score predicts if the queried object is present in the current frame or not. If any of the three predicted occlusion score is close to zero, it means that the model thinks that the object of interest is most likely occluded or otherwise absent in the current frame. To recap, just like the IOU scores, SAM generates an occlusion score for each of the three predicted masks. The three IOU score tells us how confident SAM is for those three predicted masks and the three occlusion scores tells us how likely SAM thinks that the corresponding object is absent in the scene. All right, so that was a deep dive on how the whole SAM v2 architecture works. But before we end this video, let's briefly discuss how the dataset is generated and how the model was trained. The dataset is generated in a three-step data engine pipeline. In the first phase, a group of annotators manually annotate frames from about 1.4 thousand videos and 16k masklets. There is no tracking model to assist with the temporal propagation of the annotated masks but the annotators do have access to the original SAM model to assist with the initial segmentation, which they can then clean up using editing tools like a brush and an eraser. The data collected from phase one is used to train a basic SAM2 model. This one is not really trained to be promptable or react to clicks, but they're only trained on dense masks obtained from the ground truth. In phase two, annotators can use all of the tools from phase one and this basic SAM2 mask model to annotate more images. SAM2 can propagate masks along the time axis, so the annotations are now much faster to generate, and this allowed them to collect 63.5 thousand masklets. The data generated during phase two is again used to train the SAM2 model, which now accepts various types of prompts, including masks and point clicks and so on. In phase three, SAM can already generate decent masks and annotators just need to provide refinement clicks to edit the masklets. They continually train SAM2 with newly annotated data and use the train model to annotate even more data and eventually end up with a massive collection of 197,000 masklets. 
The final SAM2 model also segmented 451.7 thousand new masklets automatically from unlabeled videos without any human supervisions. And these automatic masklets plus the 197,000 manually annotated ones together form the massive SAV dataset. And as you can see, they are ridiculously awesome. I was so blown away with all of the amazing results I saw in the SAM2 website. I frankly don't believe that this is even the reality. I mean, this was a really nice paper to read. I got to learn a lot and the model is super fun to play with. And I hope that this video will give you the right technical understanding of its inner workings. Thanks a lot for watching. You are magnificent. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel for future content and do check out our Patreon page. See you next time.